Travis um, Benjamin, um, concussion and the protocol. Go ahead. Um, going with the starting court, the quarterbacks obviously moving them in, you know, almost every two plays or so. How did that go? Did you like the mechanics of, of it? Uh, I did. I mean, I like the results of it. I mean, the two drives, a um, couple things I'd like us to do better at. It wasn't perfect, but um, for the most part, I was happy with it. What were you trying to accomplish doing that here in the final preseason game? I just wanted them to get live action of it. I mean, we've done it in practice a couple times, and this was the last time before we're going to get in the regular season. So it's the last time you can have the opportunity to do it. So I kind of wanted to do it this game. You want to kind of, I mean, obviously everything you do today is pointing toward two weeks from now winning football games in the future. Is that something that you, you want to put in the back of teams' minds that this is an option, this is something you guys can do? Um, yeah, I mean, it is an option. So whether it's in their mind or not, um, I mean, that's that's up to them. But I mean, we got two guys who can play. And um, well, we've been doing it in practice a little bit, wanted to do it out there in the game. And I think it's always going to be an option. Uh, what did you think about how each each quarterback uh, I thought they did a good job. I mean, by no means was it perfect, but I thought just the function of it and going in and out and not knowing when it's going to be, um, you know, it wasn't a planned rotation or anything. I was trying to make it situational, so I was just doing it mainly off impulse and, um, you know, whenever the down and distance, it felt like what we wanted to call. So um, those guys seemed like they handled it good. Uh, I'll meet with them tomorrow and watch all with them, which I'm looking forward to, but um, today I thought it was good. Is that part of it is just how they react to being in and out, in and out? Uh, yeah, I think it's them. I think it's the team. I think it's me trying to do it, just not knowing exactly when. I mean, I, they both know it's coming, but you just don't know when it's coming. So I wanted it to be pretty random, and um, at least doing it today felt pretty comfortable. What do you think when you saw Jimmy Garoppolo uh, going for the end zone head first? Um, I mean, that, that's Jimmy. You guys have seen him lower his head and run a number of times since he's been here. So Jimmy has kind of got a linebacker mentality. Um, I'm all for him throwing it to hook it in the flat, too. Um, but I kind of like that about Jimmy, too. I mean, I don't ever want him to risk himself and get hurt. But um, I, mean, I think that's why guys fight for him. How did Trey make it through? It seemed like he went and hit his hand on a helmet or something. Yeah, I think he had a finger jam. I mean, it wasn't too bad from what I was told. Um, I'm sure I'll find out more about it later. What did you think of the way Trey created space for the running backs running out? Um, I mean, I think he only. I mean, I think he only ran it once. Um, so, I mean, just those guys weren't closing at all. So, Early, or at least the way that you know his presence had defenders crashing in on him to create space. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of happened with us later when their quarterback ran it too. It's just how guys want to play it, and um, they want you to hand it off. So I'm glad he made the right decision. It seems like he made the right decision on all of them. I think they gave him one opportunity to pull it, um, and he did. Uh, given the, Jimmy's injury history, the way he tore his ACL, the fact that this is a preseason game, you don't say anything to him like, do not lower your throwing shoulder uh, and get killed on a <laughs> one yard run. Yeah, you say that to him on in every game. Um, you know, it's not a one yard run; it's a boot leg, and sometimes guys go for the end zone on the one yard line. But I mean, I say that to him every single time. I mean, you don't want guys to lower their shoulder and risk getting hurt at any time. That's why I'd always prefer the throw to the guy. But sometimes it's hard to avoid that stuff in football. Well, is Jimmy going to start first week? Um, I mean, I guess we'll have to see. I mean, I, I don't like playing this game, but everyone keeps asking me that question. I'm not just giving the answer just to satisfy the question. I think we got a pretty good idea, like I said, all along. Uh, I think our team does, and um, we're pretty good with it as long as I can keep surviving press conferences. <laughs> How's that going for you? I, I'm all right with it. It's just trying to be respectful. <laughs> Did you have to let the starters go a little longer and stop because they got the two scores, or was that about what you No, I mean, I did earlier in the week. I wanted to treat it more like what we've always done in the third game, and you always reach for a half in the third in the third game. Um, I was really happy with our practices on Wednesday and Thursday, so um, our goal was to get around 20 plays, and some guys were at 10, some guys were at 25, so it was pretty random throughout all of it. Well, you, you indicated you did this the quarterback rotation a little bit by impulse and feel. Would you imagine when the games count? Or no, I don't. I mean, everything you go in with a plan, but nothing in a game is real structured. I mean, you have a game plan and you just go and you usually got 40 seconds to make a decision, which, um, you know, it's less than that because you got to get it to them before 15 seconds. So that's just that's how game days are and it's hectic. And that's why we all have headsets on and with the substitutions and you do it today. We did it with quarterbacks, but that's a big deal with every position, usually except the line. What do you see from Jaquaski? Is he starting to cook himself again? What's that? 
Yeah, I was real pumped for Tart to come back this week. He had two really good um, days of practice. Um, you know, it was looking like a long shot for him at the beginning, but he started feeling a lot better um, down in L.A. with the Chargers. He was telling us how good he was going to look, and um, he went out there on Wednesday and Thursday, and uh, he wasn't lying. He had a great two days of practice. Um, didn't want to have to play him as much, but we had to also find out where he was at for this 53. I mean, we, we know Tart how good of a player he is and how much he can help us. Um, but today was really almost like his third and a half practice if you kind of walk through. So I was just really pumped he was able to go out there. And I think he played about between 25 and 30 plays, um, which was the goal to see if he could get through that. And I'll watch the tape and stuff, but I was just real happy that he got through it because we saw him playing at high level in practice too. Well, you say that about how Jalen Hurd was able to handle his workload today. Um, similar to what I just said about Tart, um, you know, I was glad that he could get out there and get through it. Um, you know, it's he hasn't been able to practice as much, and I think he got about 25 plays today too. Um, I know some plays he'd like to have back, um, a couple ca a couple drops there it looked like, um, but I was really I considered it a su success. I mean, that was his first time playing uh, in a couple years in a game. Um, he's had a long road to get back and get to that point, and um, I think it was a big day for him getting through it. Yeah, with those two guys, with Tart and and Hurd, is it almost more important? what you see from them tomorrow and the day after than what you see today? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. We know we got some good players there. Um, you're always trying to tell the future with, you know, you don't want to keep good players and get rid of some other players that you know can help you if um, you're going to hope you have those guys back in a few weeks. So it's always a challenge when guys aren't able to practice as much because of the injuries that they've had. That's why they stayed out there a little bit longer today. Um, we had to give them some time to get healthy where they had a chance to do that. And um, at least from what I've been told so far, it was a success with both of them. The same thing with Elijah Mitchell. He missed valuable time in those first two games. How did he look during practice? And I thought he looked real, uh, real good. You know, he started out having a real good camp for us um, at the beginning of training camp, um, and then he um, he's been out here. I'm gonna say the last two weeks, and we knew this would be a big week for him. He was starting to feel better towards the end of LA. Uh, he had two and a half real good days of practice, and uh, we wanted to make sure to get him in the game. To you never know about runners, especially rookies and stuff, till they get in that game. And um, he looked the same way in the game that he has in practice. So I was real happy with Elijah. How challenging is it for you for that fifth? Uh that fourth and fifth running back spot? Uh, it's real challenging. I mean, all of, every guy that you guys have seen out there is um, ran like an NFL back. Um, and we, those guys have done a great job. They've been great people throughout the whole thing. I know they're all pulling for each other, too. Um, they're definitely making our job harder. Take three more questions. For the quarterback decision, how much do you gauge the locker room's uh, opinion of who should start? How much is it just you? Um, I mean, you hope you don't have to gauge the locker room's opinion. You, you hope that, I mean, those guys are it's really hard for them to do their job. It's really hard for me to do my job. It's hard for everybody. So you hope that guys have the confidence that we're doing things right. Um, I think our guys know us well enough that, I mean, guys always have opinions, I'm sure. But I mean, um, I think our team's going to support us with whatever we do. played a pretty deep because he hadn't done a lot. This yeah, it was the same thing with him, too. You know, he's been in and out with some injuries throughout training camp, and uh, he had to play some. You know, it's such a fine line um, because, I mean, the last thing we want to do is get him hurt. Um, but we also got to get him ready for the season, and uh, he has no problem going out there. We got to we got to hold him back, if anything. Um, and I think he ended up getting between 20 and 25, which was the goal going into it. I didn't plan on it lasting as long, um, but, I mean, it, I mean, our defense played real well at the beginning of the game. There's a number of three and outs. You know, I think they're on a rep count like nine um, halfway through the second quarter. Or so um, he got the plays, but uh, he was out there a little bit longer than I thought. But it, the same amount of plays I thought he would get. Held out four cornerbacks. Was that to allow the, the two rookies to get as many reps as possible? Uh, yeah, it was. And it was take care of those guys, too. Is the defensive line going to be one of your toughest decisions on the 53? What's that? defensive line going to be one of the toughest decisions for you? Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, it's, it is tough. Um, we'll see how um, many we end up keeping there and how it goes. I mean, you know, if we're allowed to keep a bunch, it can be a little bit easier. But uh, they've had, they've, you guys have seen them in all, all three of these games. They've played good from the beginning to the end. Um, and I think our D-line has been pretty good here these last three years. And I feel the same this year.